Thanks very much, Peter. Uh, firstly, my name is Russell. Uh, I teach at the Ontario Science Centre, so if you come with your students, you might get me in your class. I teach from grade 1 to grade 12. You'll find me in the planetarium, uh, and I blow things up at work. Uh, and I love physics and I love chemistry. So today I'm going to talk a bit about physics and chemistry, do a bunch of experiments. I will need volunteers. And there might be a couple of explosion-y things. And if there are explosion things, we've got to take precautions as safety. Uh, I, I get to wear these because I'm closest to the explosion. But if you don't like loud noises, this is what we always suggest. You put your hands in front of your ears like that, rather than behind, in front. And the sound waves go round, and it makes the sound a bit quieter. So if you do that right now, see if you, if you can see a difference. There's, or hear a difference. So there's that. Then you take your hands away, and does it sound the same? Although it's coming through speakers, who would know? All right, anyway, so uh, if there is an explosion there, I'll make sure they turn off the microphone so you don't get a very big bang. So I'd like to talk a little bit about physics. Now, um, uh, there's a few people in, in, in science who I really like, that what they came up with great ideas. And one of them is Newton, Isaac Newton. Anyone ever heard of Isaac Newton? Uh, what's he famous for, do you know? Gra yeah, the idea of gravity. I mean, people weren't always floating off the planet. There was always gravity. He just gave it a concept. So let's do a, a little gravity experiment. Um, I have a, a marble, and I put it inside this little streamer over here, and uh, I'm going to throw it in the air. Uh, now, when I throw it into the air, what's going to happen to it? Well, it's got to go up first. It's got to go, it's got to go somewhere first. And then it's going to fall. And uh, things get pulled down by gravity. So we'll just do this very quick experiment. I'm going to whip it around like this. Now, is this a circular force or a straight line force? What do you think? Is that circular or straight line? What do you think? It looks circular, doesn't it? But if I let it go, it will go in a straight line. Now, just to get, illustrate how that works, um, I've got this tray over here, and the tray can swing, and I can swing the tray around. Now, if I put a glass of water on there, now I've got a glass over here, I've got a glass here, and I'm going to put some water onto it, into the glass, Ooh, let me just empty that out, like this. and I'm going to put this onto the tray. Now, as I pull this down, gravity is pulling the tray down, and these are in tension. And we'll talk about tension. Now, what would happen if I turned the tray upside down? What, what do you think might happen? Uh, yeah, any ideas? Uh, you, what, this, what do you think would happen? Yeah, that's what we expect to happen. Well, let's see. Now, I'm going to start it going. We'll go swing here. We call this momentum here. We're building up momentum. And then we're going to keep going around, like this. Now, is the water coming out? Let's have a look. Is it still there? Yes, it's still there. Now, this is a, a nice trick. I like doing this. And we call this force, this circular force, we call it centripetal force. I like that word, centripetal force. Now, you said it was a, a circular force. Now, I'm going to do it with the water on here. Now, what would happen if I let go of the tray as it's going? Would it go in a straight line? Would it continue to go in a circle? Um, what do you think? Uh, hands up a straight line. All right. Hands up a circle. Hands up, I don't know. Hands up, I don't care. <laughs> well, I don't care if you don't care. I'll tell you anyway. Uh, so like, going round and round and round, round, let go of it. It goes <clears throat> in a straight line over there. And it's knocked my plasma ball over there. Oh, and I've knocked the edge of the tray off. But it's OK. I don't need a tray anymore. So uh, it is a straight line force. So let's talk about these straight line forces. Um, firstly, um, let's take something that's round, something like this, a Frisbee. Now, to throw it, what do you have to do? Do you have to throw it like a pancake? Like a pancake? Uh, do you throw it like a pancake? No, what do you do, what do you, when you throw it? What do you have to do? So it's horizontal, so just throw it into the air like that. Or should I put a spin on there? Who thinks spin? All right, so if I put a spin on there, it's going to spin in this direction. So it's moving this direction, because it's going to go in a straight direction now. Oh, see that man's just going to sit down over there. I wonder if he can catch this. Oh, let's try somebody else. He's actually not even looking at me. Let's try. Well, I tell you what, let's get somebody out here on the stage and they can catch it in front of me. So you'll start with you right at the front. It's perfect. Uh, are you any good at Frisbee? No. We're going to find out. All right. All right. So I'll stand over on that side. You're going to stand over this side over here. And I'm going to throw it towards you very gently. Let's see if you can catch it. So I can put a spin on there like that. Oh, yeah, I can't catch them either. Don't worry. Don't worry. All right. So can you throw it back? Somebody's going to get hit. All right. It's OK. It's OK. Um, can you throw it? Now, 
I'm actually very good in boomerangs. I actually taught myself to throw boomerangs. And um, they are a very, very clever piece of physics there, but I didn't bring any with me to practice. One more time, let's throw it back to you and see if you can catch it this time. I'll go nice and gently. Oh, there you go, really good. So one more time, you've got to get back to me. You've got to get back to me. I'll see if I can catch it. I'm not going to dive off the stage, though. Oh, <laughs> all right, it's OK. Oh, perfect. Yo, yo. Let's give this young lady a round of applause. <laughs> I think we timed that one. All right, so uh, can anyone use a yo-yo? Anyone knows how to use a yo-yo? Who's really good at this, because I'm terrible at yo-yos. Uh, can, you, can you have a go? All right. Now, a yo-yo, as it goes down the string, it starts to spin. And it goes in a straight line down the string. And we're going to see how strong this straight line force is here. So there's your yo-yo. What's your name, by the way? Uh, Acum. Acum, all right. Acum's going to give us our yo-yo demonstration. Yeah, I'm as good as that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I can do as well. You know, can you do better than me? We'll, do it, we'll wind up one more time. So I like to use lots of toys when it comes to describing physics, because a lot of our toys have everything to do with physics. And I'm going to show a few spinny things. Let's see if we can do it one more time with ACAM here. Give it a go. As I say, I'm not great at this, so don't worry about it. Oh, and a light comes on as well. We have to talk about light. All right, let's give this gentleman a round of applause. Now, this spinning force is really, really strong. Now, I've got a big bolt here. I'm going to drop it on the ground. It's a big, heavy bolt. And I've got a lump of rubber over here. I'll drop that on the ground, and it bounces. Um, which, one's, which, which one do you think is heavier? Which one, thinks, which one do you think is heavier, the bolt or the rubber? The bolt, yeah. If I let go of this, I'm holding it there. The bolt's going to be pulled down by gravity, so that's a lot heavier. Now, we're going to use this word heavy, but there's another word we need to use called mass. Um, does somebody want to volunteer their child that I can throw a brick at? <laughs> Um, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, someone behind you is pointing at you. Yeah, he wants me to throw bricks at you. Come on out, come on out. I'm going to throw a brick at you. <coughs> Usually people say no, you know. And what's your name? Oliver. Excellent. All right. So uh, you be careful. You've got to stand over there. Now, you're really, really sure you want to, carry, uh, want, to, want to catch this brick, because it's kind of heavy, this brick. OK. OK. So I'm going to use two hands. I'm going to swing it at you. You understand what's going on here. You, you do understand. <laughs> Yeah, you're insured. Yeah. Or you've got a spare. Yeah. Oh, I've got four. Oh, there we go. All right, so uh, I'm ready. Ah! <laughs> so, so what is that, a brick? Is it a brick? It's a brick shape, isn't it? But we're going to use a word called weight, and that has to do with gravity pulling us down to the ground, and another word called matter, which is the stuff that makes up the brick. All right, Oliver, I haven't finished with you yet. I've already thrown a brick at you. You survived. Got to try something else. I've got three metal spheres here. Which one do you think is the heaviest? The middle one. So, all right, so I'm going to throw this at you then. So, uh, heavy? Now, that's got a shell. It's like a, a, a hollow sphere. And all the stuff that makes it up, and we're going to use the word matter, matter, and that's a solid. That's a good word here. How many states of matter are there? Yeah. Yeah, somebody's got to know. Oh, yeah, all right, all right. Oh, you know. Well, he knows, of course. Yeah. But do you know how many states? How many? Four. four. Who says four? That's really good. Now, there's actually six, but let's talk about the four. The six I can't show you. One is a solid. The other, sorry about this, Oliver, is a liquid. Sorry about that. And the other we call a gas. And you're breathing that right now. Now, if I could contain all of the Earth's atmosphere inside this balloon here, um, uh, would this, this strong gentleman here be able to pick up the balloon? If it had all the Earth's air. I'm an evil scientist for the day, and I've stolen the atmosphere. He wants it back. He said, everyone's got to breathe. Could he lift up the entire Earth's atmosphere? What do you think? It's just made of air. Hands up if you think you could. Yes, you can. Who thinks, no, you could never lift it all up? Who just doesn't know? And doesn't know is really good. And that's why we have to ask questions. A don't know is a good answer to any question, because the person who's asking you should be able to provide you with that answer. If they don't, find someone who can. Go on the internet. That's what we are. We're very curious human beings. Now, I actually researched this. If that balloon could contain the entire Earth's atmosphere, it would weigh 5,600 trillion tons. 
And that's not even including the water vapor. That's another 146 trillion tons. And we live at the bottom of an ocean of atmosphere. All the atmosphere is up above our, above our heads, goes up to the edge of space there, and we're at the bottom, and it squeezes on us. Do you feel it squeezing on you? No, we evolved on this planet, so we don't notice the air squeezing on us. But this is the thickest part of the ocean. No, actually it's not. The thickest part of our atmosphere is uh, in the borders of Israel and Jordan. It's called the Dead Sea, and it's the lowest place on Earth, and the atmosphere is thicker down there. In fact, there's more oxygen. Plants like to grow. They just don't have a lot of water to grow in. All right, so we've got this one. That one seems to be very light. Which one is heavier? All right. I'm going to take this one off of you. And you're going to hold your hands out like you're going to be a scale here. You're going to drop in your hands. Let's see. Well, let's face these guys over here. So they need to, your dad needs to laugh. All right, so I'm going to drop this in your hand. How far does this hand go down? About that far? Let's try this one. Ooh. So that's got more stuff in it. That's got more matter. That's got more solids, more atoms inside. There's less atoms inside that. All right, let's give Oliver a round of applause. He did great. Thanks very much, Oliver. So, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so this guy called Newton, he said things get pulled down to the, gro to the ground. You could, we could call it gravity. And, uh, and gravity changes in different places. If I was on the moon, I would weigh different. My weight would be different. I am on the Earth, and let's say I weigh 120 pounds, I wish. Uh, and <clears throat> I went to the moon, it had one sixth of the Earth's gravity. I'd weigh 20 pounds. But I have still have the same amount of matter in my body. If I lose a hair, I lose some atoms. But your, your weight is where you happen to be standing. All right, so bolt, heavy, foam, light. Do you think I can lift up this bolt with this without pulling on the string? Who thinks it can be done? Who thinks maybe not? Well, let's give it a go. Now, we did use the yo-yo before, and I talked about things that spun. So I'm going to start spinning this around. And this is our centripetal force here. And if I spin it around fast enough, it's, far, it's stronger than force. Ooh, gotta be careful there. Eh? It's stronger, stronger than the force of gravity that pulls it down. If I go slowly, the centripetal force is weaker, and gravity is stronger, and it goes down. So this spinning force here is also we call it it's a, it's a changes direction because this is going up and down. This is going side to side. It's called it's a right angle over there. And the reason our moon stays in orbit around our Earth, and our Earth stays in orbit around the sun, and our, and our sun stays in orbit around our galaxy is because they're, they're spinning. And spinning things are very, very stable. So let's throw something at the crowd that spins. It's not like a Frisbee. It's lightweight. Let's see how far I can get it. Oh, nice catch, sir. You have to return it. I, I had the height advantage over here. So spinning things is good to know. They are spinning, but they are actually going in a straight line. So let's spin somebody around. I have a rotating platform over here. I need somebody who doesn't mind being spun around. I'm going to take, uh, let's have a look. Oh, person, oh, your dad caught the frisbee. You've got to come down here. Who's coming? Oh, there you are. So, uh, just so you know, uh, this ro platform rotates, so I'm going to have your daughter spinning, if that's okay. And what's your name? Drew. Drew? Drew? All right, now, uh, you're going to stand that side here. I'm going to put my foot on here to stop it spinning. So could you stand? Oh, let's turn it around so you've got the footprints there. I'm going to stand on there. Now, I'm going to ask you to hold your hands out like that. Now, I'm going to give you a little spin. And when I've said, when I, they're going to tell you to bring your arms in across your body or down by your sides. Now, if you feel a bit wobbly, step off. And we're going to observe what actually happens here. So I'm going to spin her slowly to start with. So a little spin here. Now bring your arms in. Arms out. Arms in again. Arms out. Arms in. OK. Step off for a second. Haven't quite finished with you yet. What did we observe when Drew's arms went in? What, what happened to her? She went faster. When she put her hands out, what happened? She went, she went slowed down. That's because we changed where her mass was, where atoms were. Sometimes her atoms were out there by her hands, and then we put all the atoms in the center there, and she spun faster. 
the far closer you are to, to something, you spin faster. Uh, Mercury goes around the sun in 88 days. It's very close to the sun. We have 365 and a quarter days. They have 88 days. Mind you, Mercury has a day which is 56 days long, so you get to sleep in on Mercury. All right, so we're going to add some, some mass to you. We're going to give you something to hold. We're going to give you some extra mass. And I've got these two nice bolts that came from a railway. And you think about Stanford Fleming. It was standard time across Canada. It's because of railway schedules. And these are railway bolts. Firstly, could you hold that? Are they OK to hold? And hold them so your hands are right at the top there. Now, uh, uh, something's going to happen here. Do you think that this young lady is going to spin faster or slower if she has extra mass? Hands up a faster. Hands of a slower, hands of a don't know. That's why we do experiments. The don't know is an important thing. I don't know. I'm going to come up with an experiment and find out whether I'm right or wrong. OK, so we're going to have you on our platform again. And once again, you can hold your hands out. Don't hold them there for too long. And when I tell you, bring your arms in. And then you've got to bring the arms out. OK, so we'll start you slowly. Arms in. Arms out. Ooh, that's your brakes. Arms in. Arms out. And just stop you there. OK, they give this young lady a round of applause. She's really, really well. Do you want to step up? All right, so what did you notice when we added some extra atoms? What did we notice when we added extra atoms? Anyone notice? What did you notice? Well, push them into went faster. And if anyone's ever seen uh, ice dancers and they, they're, they're coming to the end of their show, they, they spin very, 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 very fast. Their arms are in like that. And they want to stop themselves. And then they put their arms out and they prostrate themselves on the ice and people throw them roses. Um, and that's, they're changing their mass from, uh, from uh, mass being out there to the mass being in here. So spinning things are very, very important. Now, if you talk about gravity, it would be nice to get into space. Who would like to go into space? I would love to go into space. Love to. And uh, it's quite far. Um, all right, so you're on a rocket. How long do you think it's going to take you into space? Get into space? Um, I'm going to give you a choice here. It's going to take you a day. It's going to take you five hours. Or it's going to take you 10 minutes. Hands up for a day. Hands up for five hours. Hands up for 10 minutes. Oh, you guys are good. And I'll show you why. Now, there's something we have on Earth um, called gravity. And to stop gravity pulling things back, we have to achieve a speed. And it's called escape, escaping from gravity velocity. So I need a runner, somebody to do a run for me. Uh, let's try something who hasn't been out yet. Would you like to come out? This gentleman over here, lovely. I'm sorry to be pointing. I, just, uh, I don't want to point a laser at you. It's just rude. Oh, I do have some lasers. OK, so what's your name, sir? Callum. Callum. All right, so you're going to start here, and you're going to run to there. But we'll give you one second. Now, everyone's got to time this second right. So everybody say one Mississippi. No, I could barely hear that. Come on, one Mississippi. One Mississippi. Takes a second to say that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, on your mark, set, go. Callum's going to run. You're going to say one Mississippi. When you get to Pippi, I'm going to say stop, and we're going to see how far he can travel in one second. And we're going to say, this is how the distance over time. All right, so on your marks. And get set. Go! And stop. All right, stay there, Callum. All right, now, you started here. You ended there. Now, that's about a meter. How many meters do you think uh, Callum went in his one second? Give me a guess. Anyone give me a guess? Uh, uh, yes, definitely I'm wearing yellow. How many meters? Five. We're going to count this out. One... Two, three, four, five. You want to guess again? Six, yes. So he traveled six meters in one second. Does that make sense? In one second, he traveled six meters. Now, if Callum wants to leave the Earth's surface, if he wants to be a rocket, in that one second, he has to travel 11 kilometers. Everybody say one Mississippi. Just imagine you just traveled 11 kilometers. And that's how fast rockets have to go before gravity We'll pull them back to Earth again. All right, Callum, nice bit of running here. Hope you're not too tired. Grab a seat. Give a round of applause. You're a good runner there. Now, uh, you know, gravity pulls you down. You've got to throw up. So there's a lot of opposites here. Opposites, you know, up, down, in, out, black, white. Uh, we use it a lot, these opposites. So let's talk a little about uh, opposite when it comes to a force. Now, can we see force? Can you see gravity? 
We can't see it. Can you hear it? Can you smell it? Can you feel it? Can you taste it? No. So, but we know it's there because we don't fly off the planet. Because we have this mass, this, all this stuff that makes up our planet. Now, there's another force which I really like called magnetism. Does anybody know about magnetism? What do we know about magnets? What, does anyone know anything about magnets? Anything special you know about magnets? Uh, what do you know about magnets? Metal stick to them. Now, do all metal stick to it? Let's ask this question here. Yes, they do. Hands up. Yes, they do. All metals. Have a no, they don't. All right. Three metals. Iron, nickel, cobalt. Cobalt, where are you going to find it? Difficult to find. If you ever see blue glass, it's called cobalt glass. It doesn't make the glass magnetic, but that's what makes the glass blue. We have a lot of nickel in our money, and I use a magnet to hold my money together. And iron and steel, which is kind of the same, are also magnetic. Now, there's an invisible force around magnets called the magnetic field. And it's difficult to know it's there unless you do an experiment. Now, what if you have a north and a south pole? What do they do? Do they come together and do it apart? Hands up for come together for north and south. Hands up for go apart for north and south. Hands up for just don't know. And now you do because opposites, the north and the south, will come together. And like poles, the south and the south and north and north will repel. I have three magnets on this rod here, and they're all repelling. And if I pull them down, they go firing up. They're pushing away from each other. There's an invisible force in there. I can't smell it. I can't hear it. I, can't, I just know it's there because I can see something is happening. Now, um, I'd like to do an experiment with, a, with a, uh, one of the, the young people in this uh, audience here. It's a little bit risky. You know, perhaps I want to get something uh, written from your parents. I don't know. Who wants to sort of, uh, 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 your dad's pointing at you. You have to come down here. And he has no idea what's going to happen to you. Well, a very trusting man. Now, I have a box here. Uh, and it's got an X on it. It's, it's full of force. This box is full of force. And I'm going to put it just there. Now, I'm just going to move my brain out of the way. Keep an extra. All right, and what's your name? Julia. Julia, I'm going to ask you to put your hand on top of the X there. And, and you, can, you can not do this any time you like. Okay, so you're not forced. So I'm going to put you right in the middle of the X there. Now, um, I'm going to grab something over here. Ah, yes. Um, I'm going to ask a question of, uh, of uh, this young lady here. Do you know what acupuncture is? Yes. What is acupuncture? Needles where? Into your skin. All right, well, I've got some needles over here. Oh, you did, you did volunteer your daughter, you know that. All right, so, so I've got some needles over here. You okay with this? Julie, you sure you're okay with this? All right, yeah. You sure you're sure? All right, well, you know, it's too late now. Okay. So, all right, so I've got some needles over here. And I'm going to take a few out. And I'm going to make you feel very, you know, see how you feel. All right, so your hand's there. All right, so if you want to look back there for a moment, I'm going to do that. We'll do this one here. Do that one there. Do that one there. Do that one there. Do you feel okay? That's $20. That, that, that was it. All right, now, this is the magnetic field. We can't see it, but we're using pins to illustrate it. Now, all, all those pins standing vertical, are they spread out? Will they? They're spread out. Now, if uh, Julia allows me to lift her hand up, the what do you think is inside the box, by the way? What's in the box? A... Yeah, there's a magnet in there. Now, if uh, Julia lets me lift her hand up, the further I get away from the magnet, the weaker the force is going to be, the closer, the stronger. Now, if I move her hand, we can actually see the shape of the magnetic field because the pins will move in that direction. That makes you feel good, that. Really good. That's a pressure point there. Okay. So that's our invisible magnetic field. The magnets are really, really cool. Now, Julia, could you do that with your hand upside down? And let's give Julia a very big round of applause for being so brave. Now, people have been playing around with magnets for a long time. Our Earth is a gigantic magnet. We have three Norths on our, our Earth. We have the pole star Polaris. We have the axis, the point that goes through the imaginary center of the Earth, which we rotate on. 
And then we have the magnetic north, which shifts around a little bit there. So we've been mucking around with magnets. Our compasses work because of our magnetic field. Mars does not have a magnetic field. Well, it does, but it's lumpy all over the place, and we, our compasses wouldn't work. Mind you, a day on Mars is about 46 minutes longer than ours, so my watch wouldn't work either. So, magnets. And there was a man, there's, there's some, always been some very great thinkers who like to experiment. And one of these things that was experimenting was a, was a man lived in 1830, a long time ago, and his name was Hans Christian Orstad. And he was playing around with a newly invented battery. It was called Volta's Pile. When I say newly invented, it was about you know, 29 years earlier it was invented. 1799, first battery. And he connected the two wires on a battery and made what we call a circuit. And he had a compass sitting on his table, and a compass needle swung. And he didn't know why. There was no magnets. Why did it swing? What he had discovered was that there's a, a, uh, electricity and magnets go together. And we use a word called electromagnetism. Now, I have a battery here, a small battery. It has what we call one and a half volts of electricity. That's named after a man called Alessandro Volta, who actually invented the battery. And it's not a particularly strong magnet. But I want to see if two people can pull it apart. We want to do a tug of war here. All right, I'm going to get this uh, gentleman here with the yellow shirt, because you've had your hand up a couple of times. I have to bring you out. And I'm going to go to the other side of the room. I'm going to go to the lady over there with a red uh, jacket on. All right, don't pull too hard. She's a bit smaller than you. What's your name? Iggy. Iggy. All right, so uh, do you think you can pull this apart? It's got a safety thing there, so just in case. All right. Now, what's your name? Sophia. Sophia, all right. Because this is a fair match, isn't it? All right. So, so um, inside here is a big coil of copper wire, like lots of wire wound around, wound around, wound around, and it's got a metal core to the center. And I have a battery. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these two things there. I'm going to make a circuit. That means I'm going to put this wire onto this side of the battery, and the electricity is going to pass through, and we're going to make something called an electromagnet. Now, we've got two healthy human beings here. Grab this one, Sophie. And Iggy, you're going to grab that one there. And I'm going to hold this there. And go three, two, one. And you're going to have a tug. I might have to give you a hand. All right. Three, two, one. Go. Come on. You're not even trying. Come on, Iggy. Give it Iggy. all your muscles. Come on. Come on. You can do this. Yep. I'm not doing anything here. This is all Sophie. You know, I'm barely, barely touching this here. Yeah. I'm sliding. I'm sliding. It's too strong. Okay, we'll stop there. Okay. All right, now, uh, just hold it up. Just hold it up like this. Now, I'm going to take away the electricity, and let's see what happens. If I take away the electricity, little tug. There you go. So we can make a really, 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 really strong magnet with a little bit of electricity. And these electromagnets are used everywhere. If you're wearing headphones, there are little electromagnets turning on and off so quickly that they vibrate. And our brain, our eardrum, gets those vibra vibrations. And our brain says, oh, that's very nice music. So electromagnets are used all over the place, not just here. All right, let's give our two volunteers a big round of applause, please. So we've learned a lot about physics. We're going to get off the planet. We need to get off the planet. We're going to go into space. You guys might be taking vacations on Mars, or at least the moon. It's only three days there, three days back. You can't get across Canada in that sort of time. So how are we going to get there? What should we use to get into space? Should we use an elevator? Well, there's an idea for a space elevator, and it's all to do with this force here, the centripetal force. But right now, our best thing is a rocket. And as I said, we've got to go fast, 11 kilometers a second. So let's do a couple of rock rocket experiments. I need someone to help me with an experiment. And get that young lady with a striped shirt. Would you like to come down, please? Now, uh, it's a bit sad, but this is my rocket. What's your name? Sally. Sally, do I stand over there for a second? Now, I've got a bicycle pump here. It's a small one. And what you have to do is you have to do that with it. So uh, let, do a practice first. Uh, do you want to put that on the table over there? OK. Uh, go a bit slowly. Uh, you don't have to go very fast with this one. And let's see if we get some air coming out of this. So you're going to hold that bit and pull back and forth. Yeah, that's working. All right. So I'm going to place my rocket into my rocket launcher. 
and I'm going to get Sally to pump it up. Like that. So, ooh, I'm, uh, wait, yeah. so you can start pumping now. Nice. Oh, you came apart. You <laughs> broke it. You broke my pump. Okay, let's see if we can fix it. I'm very good at fixing things. Are we good? All right. All right, so what Sally is going to do, you can pump now, I think, is she's putting lots and lots of air inside there, and you can compress air. And it's starting to fill up the bottle. Now, Newton had this law which, oh, he broke it again. You're the worst. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have picked you. you know. All right, go try it again. All right, okay. All right, so, so, yeah, so. I think you're very strong, that's why. So she's compressing air into there, and the air doesn't want to stay in there, so it's pushing against that stopper. And there was this man called Isaac Newton we talked about, and he said that every action has an equal and an opposite reaction. How are we getting doing? Harder. It's getting harder. Good. That's good. I want it to get harder. Uh, let me do a little bit in the end here. You did most of the work. I'm going to do that. Oh. <laughs> so it, it pushed away from the earth. Um, I have to get someone, retrieve this one there. Now, did it go very far? Did it go very far? No, it didn't. So what we're going to do is we need to give it better rocket fuel. And I'm going to give it a little bit of water. Now, the water is now going to push on the stopper. Let's see if we can see a difference. We can compress gases like the air, but we cannot compress a liquid. If you could, you'd be able to buy two liters of pop in a one liter bottle. Come over here. All right, we're going to connect this up again, and I'm going to put the stopper in here. And I'm going to try and get it underneath that towel because the, the university wouldn't like a wet floor. OK, and let's pump some air into there. And you can see the air going in now because it's passing through the water, and the water is bubbling. And the air is sitting on top of the water, and it's going to push against the water. And the water is going to push against the stopper. How are we doing? Oh, we're getting a nice pump in there. I know. I had a better bicycle pump, but I broke it. I did. I actually, I broke it. Shall we give you a hand? All right, me there. I'm going to give you the last pump for you, if you don't mind. Cross your fingers. <laughs> Did it go higher? I wasn't looking. Yeah. And what happened there was now we could push something backwards. We could push water backwards, and that pushed the rocket further away from the water. We had stuff to push down. We had, we had, a, we had matter. We didn't have gaseous matter, we had liquid matter. Let's give this young lady a very big round of applause, very big muscles. All right, now, first time done at the, at the RCI, as far as I know of. All right, so I've made this. I'm a bit of a mad scientist. And, and, and if I, I do this, it will spark. It's a, it's a barbecue sparker, and it's called a piezo electric crystal, which is really cool, which is basically a quartz crystal where when you compress it, it gives you a bit, of, a little bit of electricity. And the other side is if you take a quartz crystal and give it electricity, it vibrates, and you can put your watch on that because it always vibrates the same. Right, now I put inside here a liquid called ethanol, and it's like an alcohol, but you can't drink this alcohol. And then I took all the liquid out, so I've left just gases in there. And we're going to see if this works. And we're going to see if we can get it to those people in the balcony up there. Now, this might make a little bit of a bang. So if you want to protect your ears, let's see what happens. And cross your fingers, because it might not work. So, all right, so three, two, one. Oh, way beyond, way beyond. <laughs> OK, and I did a backup, just in case. All right, so we'll see if this one goes as well. OK. so. We've got gas in there, we've got vapor called ethanol, and to make something burn, you need three things. You need air. Put some in, hang on. There's air in there. I put a fuel in there, something to burn, and I've got some heat with that, that spark over there. And we'll see one more time. Three, two, one. Nothing, misfire. Not enough gas in there. Let me smell. Well, maybe I didn't put it in the wrong bottle. Let me check the other one. No. Well, I'll tell you what I can do. I can prepare one for later on. I'm going to put some more of my special ethanol in here. And I put a color in it so I know it's not water to lick, to, so it's not drinkable. So this is what I'm going to do. Put a bit in there, swirl it around, pour it out, and I've left gases inside. There's no liquid left. And we'll leave it here, and maybe to, uh, a little bit later, we'll see if we can get this one to fire as well. I'll place it in there. 
Now, combustion. Combustion. Ah, I have the matches here. And you know what I said about you need three things for fire? One, you need oxygen. So that's why dolphins never invented fire. Uh, yeah, it's difficult to strike a match underwater. And you can't use fire in space. But there is a chemical there, and there's a chemical there. You want to give it a bit of friction. In fact, what is friction? Everyone do that. Can you feel friction? What, what, what energy does it generate? Heat, yeah, heat energy. And the friction, you know, sometimes is good. You know, brakes on your bicycle, definitely very good. And sometimes not so good if you're coming through the Earth's atmosphere and you don't want to get very, very hot. So if I, I burn this, I'm going to get some friction, I'm going to get some flame, and I've got some paper here to burn, just a little bit. So we're in the U of T, and they won't want, want, want me to burn down the building. So there is my, oh, hang on a sec. Safety first. Okay, one more time. So, three, two, one. We do it one more time. Quick or slow? Where's all the paper, burning paper? It's in the air. See, we can't destroy matter. Uh, you can't destroy things. You can only change them from one thing to another. Um, so I changed that from a solid, the paper, into a gas, and, and we burnt everything. That was a very good combustion. We're going to do another little experiment, but this time I am not going to use a match to light my paper. I'm going to use light. So I'm going to place this into this clamp over here. And X marks the spot. Now, we haven't talked about light yet, and light is a very interesting thing to talk about. Um, firstly, I'm going to show you a little experiment here. It's difficult to explain, but I'd like you to see it. Now, can you see through this? Can you, can you see through it? Can you see me? Watch what happens when I do this. Can you see me now? Now, this is called polarization, which is very, very difficult to think about. But sunglasses <coughs> use this effect so you don't, your eyes don't get blinded. So we can do weird things with light. Now... Um, two volunteers to do a light experiment, and they get to keep these things. I'm going to get that little boy over there, and I'd like to have, uh, uh, let's have a look. There's a little boy at the back there. Uh, little young lady? Come on down, come on down, come on down. Your sister was up here, so definitely you should come down. All right. What's your name, young man? What's your name? Jet. Jet? As in, as in like, jet. No? Oh, oh, two T's, there you go. Ah, that's, I think, a black mineral. Two times as bad. Well, my name's Russell with two L's and two S's, I understand. All right, Jet, that's for you there. Do you know what this thing is? Where's my other volunteer? Oh, come on over here, come on over here. And what's your name? Stella. Stella, grab this. Now, come to the center over here. We're going to have the lights down in a minute here. So come over here, Jet. Great name. Now, um, does anyone know what these things are? I've never seen these things. What are they called? What's the, what are they called? They're glow sticks uh, because they glow. Now, uh, there's two chemicals in here. There's a chemical we can see floating around there, and there's a glass test tube inside, which is very easy to break, and it's got another chemical inside. And when you bend it, you break the glass test tube, and the two chemicals touch each other. Um, can we have the screen up for a minute? Because I'm going to write a big... Uh, number on the board there. This is called a blackboard for everyone who doesn't know what a blackboard is. Um, all right, so uh, we've got two chemicals here, and we're going to do a chemical reaction. We're going to do some chemistry here. And when we break it, the two chemicals are going to touch. Now, first things first, we'll break it, and I'll tell you how fast that happened. So can, anyone, can you go hold yours up like this? I'll hold my that. Let's face everyone, because they have to see, and you know, some of you might be recording. And the lights can go off, and then go three, two, one, break. Like that, like that, like that. You grab that one. I'll do this one. Ah, okay. Now, is that burning your hands, Jet? Jet? No. no. Is that burning your hands, Stella? No. So we've got light energy, but absolutely, well, very little heat energy, like 0 0.01 of heat energy. And we call this chemical luminescence. We're getting light energy from, uh, from chemicals reacting together. And fireflies do the same sort of thing. They produce two chemicals in their body and their butt lights up. There's no fire involved. They don't fly around with their butts on fire. Uh, but they do create uh, light energy. So that's a chemical reaction. Now, you get to keep those, obviously. And somebody's got to have this. Uh, I'm going to throw it out there and see who catches it. That's the best thing. 
No, you don't get to keep it, sir. Let's go for a student. <laughs> All right, let's give our volunteers a round of applause. And we have lights up, please. Now, that happened kind of quickly, didn't it? That reaction. It's like instantly we had light. And there's an interesting number I found. And it's a word called femtoseconds. And it's like you get like hours, minutes, seconds, microseconds, milliseconds, picoseconds, and there's femtoseconds. That's how we see color. And if one second is that, a femtosecond would be... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen of a second. And that's how fast some chemistry happens. When one molecule hits another molecule and something happens. And when we see color, if I'm looking at your lovely pink shirt and, and we've got Jet's shirt behind which is blue, that happens at 300 femtoseconds. We see color so quickly in our eyes. All right. Oh, I uh, might as well write it up there. Femto. I don't never get to use a blackboard this size. This is brilliant. There you go. Femto seconds. All right. So back to my paper there and something light that we can control. Now, you've heard of lasers. It's like lasers. We've heard of lasers, but they're dangerous. It's a lot of light energy in a very, very small area. Now, if somebody points a flashlight in your eyes, you go, ooh, turn the flashlight out, because it's very, very, it, it hurts our eyes. And lasers, you've got all that light concentrated in a very small area, like that. So we start out big, and we go small. Now, lasers, well, we should see how they travel before I do something with this. I will need a brave volunteer to hold a laser for me, and we've got to take it into consideration. Uh, you're, I think you're right at the front. Would you like to come out and help me out, please? And we're mostly going to have the lights down for this one as well. And let's see. Aha. So what's your name, sir? Uh, Thomas. Thomas. Right. Now, this is a green laser. Once again, we must never point it in the direction of people. So we're going to point it at the wall over there. Now, that's the button there. Now, do you want to practice that? All right. Now, just leave it on if you can. Let's have the lights down. Let's follow the beam. All right. It doesn't get darker, I guess. Oh, aha. OK. So, oh, I can't find the beam now. Where is it gone? Oh, there it is. Can we see the beam over here? So is it going in a straight line? Let's see if I can get it here. Is it going in a straight line? Yes. yes. So light travels in this straight line here. Thanks very much, Thomas. Uh, let's have the lights back up and give Thomas a round of applause. You can leap down or go around. Hmm. Come on. So, so light travels in a straight line. Now, uh, that, say, a laser was red, uh, was green. This one is red, and I'm going to put this, this laser near my, my X. And if I can get it just the right distance, get my eyeglasses down here, I can focus it enough, I can get some heat out of my light. Once again, this is a fingers crossed thing. Ah, there we go. So this is a laser that can burn things. And yes, you use supermarket lasers. Uh, they go your, do your checkout. And now, in the classes now, in school, you can say, get laser cutters. And you can make your own jigsaw puzzles and toys using lasers with very, very high intensity light. But as I say, you have to be very careful. That's why I always keep it on me. So we burnt something there. We got heat energy and we got light energy. And uh, there was chemicals in that paper. All right, I have two metal spheres. And they're made out of steel, and they're rusty. And one of them I've covered in aluminum foil. Now, energy always changes. It's called energy transformation. It goes from one energy to another. You can't make energy. You can't destroy it. You can only change it. If I take uh, some wood that's got chemicals in it and I burn it, it goes from, uh, uh, from, from the, the energy that made the wood in into heat energy and light energy. So energy changes. Now, I'm going to use my lunch energy today. That was the chemicals I had for lunch, which was a nice salad. And that was the chemicals in a salad. Now, if I had a tomato, excuse my English here, a tomato, where does a tomato get its energy from? Anyone know? What do you think? And if you don't know, it's OK. From the heat from the big fiery thing in the sky? That's the sun. Oh, I forgot about this. The fourth state of matter. It's called plasma. 
and that's what's in here, plasma. And I'm going to show you something with that in a minute as well. And the other two states of matter, just for people who might be interested, uh, one was, invent uh, was discovered in, two, in 1995, and it's called Bose-Einstein condensate, very, very close, cold, close to absolute zero. And the other one was, uh, was discovered by a scientist called uh, Deborah Chin in Chicago, and it's called fermionic condensate. It's a little bit colder. And I read something about it, and it says it has anti-gravity properties, which I think is brilliant. I like a pair of shoes made out of it, but not just yet. All right, so I'm going to use my chemical energy, which came from the sun and from the earth, because my tomato grew, and I'm going to give myself kinetic energy. I'm going to move my arms around, and I'm going to hit these two spheres together. The secret is not to get your fingers in the middle. We have the lights down a little bit, please. Okay, let's see how well this works. Now, the rust is very useful on this, and so is the aluminum. So let's have the lights down and see if I can get this to work. There, one more. There you go. And let's have the lights back up, please. And that was a chemical reaction. It's called a thermite reaction, for anyone who's actually interested in this. And it had to do with me smashing the rust against the aluminum there so fast that we got a chemical reaction, and it produced different energies. Anyone notice any energy that was produced there? Give me one example of an energy that you might have noticed. Uh, yes, uh, in the stripy shirt, what, one energy. You saw a spark, so that's light energy. If you saw a spark, that's light energy. Now, was that spark, those sparks hot or cold? Hot or cold? So there's heat energy there. Did the, was that reaction quiet? So we had sound energy. So energy changed there. We had an energy transformation. It went from my lunch energy to my moving my arms energy. We got a chemical reaction over here, and heat, light, sound, and obviously, uh, Heat, light, sound, and chemical. There was one there. All right. So we've talked about lots of, lots of opposites. And I you took, pulled you over to this because we did talk about the word plasma as a fourth state of matter. Now, as I say, this is called a plasma, uh, plasma um, experiment. And uh, we'll do this with the lights out. Now, before that, I have these fluorescent tubes over here. I want somebody to hold one, cause, but... They have to be a Jedi Knight. <laughs> if it's, they're not, it just won't work. Uh, you look like you could be a Jedi. Do you want to come out, sir? Uh, you, yeah, you can lift that thing up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. And do you want to come out here? And what's your name? Turk Skywalker. Great name. OK, so there's your lightsaber. Now, these are made of glass. So we're going to be careful with them. And you're going to just hold the end like that. Could you do like this? I've got you on a lightsaber. I have a light dagger. OK? I'm going to come over here. Now, we're going to be very careful with that, Turk. And what we're going to do is we are going to go bring that. Uh, you OK with this? You don't have to do it if you don't want to. You OK with this? OK. So I need you to hold it nice and firmly like that. OK, that's good. Now, if you're going to go and save the universe, we need to charge up your lightsaber. It's no good having a lightsaber that's not charged up because nobody's going to be saved. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to bring these close to this plasma, just close. We're not going to touch it. If we do, nothing bad happens. We're just going to bring it close. And we're going to see what happens. So I've got this over here. And uh, bring the lights down again, please, Doug. All right, let's bring it close in, a little bit closer, a bit closer. Oh, let's do this one here. So this is called an electromagnetic wave that's emanating, it's coming out of my plasma here, and it's traveling through the air, and it's giving us light energy here. Uh, Turk, is that, is that hot? So there's no heat energy there. Now, watch, I can stop those waves just by putting my hand in like that. Bring it a bit closer, and then I can do, we can do this. I'll just show you, I'll hold that for a second. If I hold that close, I can pull the light backwards and forwards. You wanna try that? Hold there, but uh, get it closer, it lights up. Then bring that hand forward. So what we're doing here is we're making a circuit again. We're attached to the ground. So we've got one part of the circuit, and then we've got the other bit of, of electromagnetic waves going through there, and we can shorten or lengthen that circuit there. All right, let's have the lights back up, please, and let's give this gentleman a round of applause. It's really very well. Strong is the force in him. 
right, so we've talked about an awful lot of things here. We've talked about gravity. We've talked about spinning. We've gone up. We've made things explode. We have to sort of finish on something that's, that's, uh, that's different. And we're going to use these opposing forces. Now, I'm not going to dry my hair. It's great as it is. But I'm going to use the force of something uh, being pushed up. Now, at the beginning, I, I threw up a marble, and it came down, came down rather fast. And uh, if I throw this up, let's see what happens to this. I throw it up. It drags air down, and it slows down. Now, it's always good to have a parachute. And that's what parachutes do. They drag some of the air with them. Now, I have a hairdryer. And I have also this ball here. Let me just put these around here. Now, um, I need to have a light that we haven't talked about yet. And it's called an ultraviolet light. And I'm just going to hold the ultraviolet light in my grips over here and perhaps set that in place there. Now, I have this sphere. And when the lights go out, it should glow in the ultraviolet. Now, it's going to go up. Sphere's going to go down. So it should sit on, that, on the column of air. Does that make sense? As long as there's air underneath it, directly underneath it, it should float. Yes? We'll give it a go. Right, so the light's off. Right back up, please. So if you look, it's floating in the air. And no, it's not a Jedi mind trick. Let's have a light back up again. Now, that's a large area here. So what I did is I got a bottle, and I stuck it on a fan here. And I have a nice fan with a small hole there. And I have a larger ball. And let's see if we can do exactly the same thing. And this is to do with air pressure. There's going to be less pressure on top of the ball, and more pressure underneath the ball, and that's going to make it float. Now, if I do it straight, you'll understand that's how it works. Oh, hang on a sec. No, it's not that. And that's because as the air goes around the ball, it gets stuck to the outside of the ball. And there's less pressure up there and more pressure underneath, even though the airstream is not directly underneath it. And this is called lift. This is how planes fly. They produce lift by air passing over and underneath the wings of the aircraft. I'm a big fan of science. I think Doing these experiments helps you under, understand things. So let's finish with one final thing, a tug of war. I need two people. And they're going to be tugging against the air. So I'm going to take that young man over there, and I'd like to have an opposing person. That young lady over there, would you like to come? You've got an owl on your shirt. Like that. Uh, well, you're going to have to do rock, paper, scissors on this one. <laughs> Oh, there, that was fair. All right, what's your name? Grace. Grace, and who's the winner of Rock, Paper, Scissors? Krista, Krista. all right. Now, uh, anyone know what these things are? What are they called? They're called suction cups, but they're wrongly named. We're going to put the two together like this. Now, when I put them together, I push all of the air out of the inside, so there's no air on the inside. At the beginning, I said we lived at the bottom of an ocean of air. And the air squeezes on us. And the air is pushing on the outside. So, two fingers into there, please. And two fingers into there, please. And let's see how much we can get a nice pop if it comes apart now. A little tug. Oh, come on, there's nothing in there. Come on, there's nothing in there. It's, it's empty. There's nothing in there. Come on, you can do better than this. Oh, the dead nobody ended up on the floor there. And what was holding it together was not the suction. It was actually the pressure on the outside. That's how suction cups work is the pressure on the outside, the pressure of the air. Now, just to give you an idea of what do I mean by the air pressure, if we were on the bottom of the ocean, 
which is the deepest pass, I think, is like 11 kilometers. All the water is pushing down and pushing, pushing you from the outside, and we will be compressed and crushed. The air does the same thing. But as I say, we evolved on this planet. And because we evolved on this planet, you see air on the outside. Well, you're going to have to put it here. You're pulling against nothing there. I know. Let's have a pop. Be careful. Don't fall down. It's better than a magnet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was bound to happen. OK, let's give our volunteers a round of applause. So in conclusion, I think that, that does it for my experiments. Oh, yeah, other than this one. Let's have a light down this one. Brain, these are called neons. And they react like fluorescence as well. Let's have the lights down. And if I put it there, I can get the lights to turn on in my brain. That's me thinking there. <laughs> you know, that's what happens when I think. It's just very sporadic thinking. That's what it is. All right, let's have the lights back up again. So these are just, this is our world. This is physics. And the best part about us humans is we're curious. We love to know how things work. And that's what we did today. We discussed how things worked, and we did experiments to do with them. Now, hopefully, a lot of it will stick with you. So I'll leave you with this final thing. And this is what I say to a lot of my students at the end of a class. And I'll say the same to you. Did you learn something? Did you learn something? Yes. All right. This is how it works. It's guaranteed you go home tonight knowing more than you knew this morning when you woke up. It's guaranteed you will go to bed tonight smarter than you were when you woke up. And every single day, your teachers and your parents, they make you smarter bit by bit by bit. Nobody learns everything together. Everybody learns things a bit at a time. And everything you pick up is knowledge. And when you use that knowledge to discover the world, we just become better. Anyway, I'd like to thank you today for joining us here at the RCIS lecture. Uh, it's been wonderful having you. Thanks to all the volunteers once again. They did great. And uh, join the RCI, that's what I say. <laughs>